salts that hydrolyze in water to affect pH. Okay, so we're going to talk about salts that react with water. And basically, these are ionic compounds that hydrolyze or react with water to produce hydronium or hydroxide. In other words, they're going to affect the pH of that solution. So now let's remind ourselves of neutralization reactions because this is how you get these salts. So let's react an acid and a base and we're going to get water and a salt. So here's our acid, hydrochloric acid. We're going to react it with sodium hydroxide. We're going to get water and this salt, this ionic compound. Now let's go ahead and react hydrochloric acid with ammonia instead. Ammonia is a weak base. And we're still going to get water and we're still going to get a salt, ammonium chloride. What's interesting about this is that this salt does not affect the pH, so it doesn't hydrolyze. And this one does. And so we're going to look at why that is. So there's a very big difference between these two salts and the pH of the solution. So let's look at the first case. This is the simplest case where we react a strong acid and a strong base. They are going to react to form water and sodium chloride, and we're going to get a neutral salt. Now, how did I know that? Well, we're going to use the conjugate seesaw idea, and that is that the conjugate acid of a strong base, so that sodium cation in this ionic compound, that guy is not acidic in water. What about the conjugate base of our strong acid? So this is a strong acid, as strong as you can get in water. The conjugate base is as wimpy as you can get, and it does not change the pH of water. It is not basic in water. So the conjugate acid of a strong base or the conjugate base of a strong acid, neither of those two react with water to change the pH. They don't produce hydronium or hydroxide. Now, case two is more interesting. So let's react a strong acid and a weak base. Let's take our strong acid, which is going to react completely, and it's going to react with our weak base we're still going to produce water, and then we're going to end up with this salt, ammonium chloride. So the weak base is going to accept a proton from the strong acid to produce ammonium, so that's NH4+, and then chloride anion is the conjugate base here. Okay, But this salt is acidic in solution, and so how did I know that? Well, let's go ahead and add ammonium chloride to water. So here's our salt, added it to water, and it's going to dissociate into chloride anions and ammonium ions. And remember that ammonium is the conjugate acid of a weak base, and so ammonium is a weak acid. Now, let's keep in mind that the conjugate base of a strong acid, which is that chloride anion, that's the conjugate base, it's not basic in water, so it does not affect the pH of water, and we've discussed this before. Now, the conjugate acid of a weak base, ammonia, is acidic in water, so if we put that compound in water, we are going to get an acidic solution. Now, what happens if we react a strong base and a weak acid? We're still going to get water in our neutralization reaction, and we're also going to get a salt, and this time it's potassium fluoride. And this salt is basic. Now, why is that? Well, let's add potassium fluoride to water, and it's going to dissociate into potassium cations and fluoride anions. And remember that fluoride is the conjugate base of a weak acid, so it itself is a weak base. So just reminding ourselves that this conjugate acid of a strong base, potassium cation, is not acidic in water. 
but the conjugate base of a weak acid, hydrofluoric acid, is basic in water. So fluoride anion does affect the pH of water. Okay, so next we're going to talk about buffers and the Henderson-Hasselbeck equation.